What's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA 06 featuring that next mod from that beautiful mod team as we are going to decide right here right now for these two semifinal games as well as the national championship game that you will see later in this episode who will be crowned the national champion here in year number two so it's gonna be a great episode hit that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel as we go ahead and hop right into it as we check in on the first semifinal matchup of the game as Kent State is going to score first here in this semifinals matchup they will go ahead and take on they're going to take that 7 0 lead here early against the Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. A little bit of a, a Cinderella. And oh boy, is Cinderella trying not to stop dancing right now? As that is Owen Williams, who, you know, he's got that offensive line number. So now definitely got some ruggedness to him, that's for sure. But he's going to get this interception here, and that will help the Warhawks set up a potential touchdown scoring drive here. We'll see if they can finish this out and tie this game up here later in this first quarter. As we'll go ahead and see Richardson drop back the pass and fire it over the middle. The Warhawks are going to tie things up here. 7-7 seven seven all. As now we got ourselves an exciting semifinal matchup. The Kent State Golden Flashes, the defending national champions going to be put on the run here. They are going to be given a run for their money, but Dante Cunningham is going to make an absolutely excellent catch in the back of the end zone. Just one of those throws by Tyler Williams, really, where it was thrown in a specific spot to where only his guy could make the catch on the football, and there was nothing that that safety could have really done about it. But we see the starting quarterback for UL Monroe get a little bit injured, a little bit shaken up, but that will not stop the Warhawks from responding here in this first quarter. And they're actually going to go ahead and tie this thing up 14 all after just one quarter of play. And let me tell you what, guys, we are out there. And listen, we're going to go ahead and you know, might have to get those track cleats out because we got a high scoring affair potentially as Tyre Williams looks to help retake the lead he's gonna throw one in the back of the end zone and oh my a jump ball that Kent State is going to go ahead and come down with my man just got mossed on that comeback pattern really just trusted his receiver and his receiver did reward him handsomely as Tyre Williams continues to just really piece apart this defense. Make that 28-16 right now. Even though the Warhawks do end up getting a safety, you can tell that it is really starting to lean towards the defending national champions. The experience in these FCS playoffs is really beginning to show. And can Matt Richardson answer right back? But that's going to be a resounding no. And not only that, this is going to be taken right back to the crib. Carlos Goolsby will get interception number three and possibly the biggest play that he has made in this entire season so far. As it gives Kent State a 19 point lead going into the final quarter. You, know, no, you never know what could happen, Kent State. Did rally from multiple possessions down uh, in their second round matchup just to get to this point, right? Like they have had some adversity as now. It's just a 12 point game here. Williams needs to continue adding on some points. They cannot settle in at 35. Williams looks downfield. He's going to go for it all, and it's going to be caught in the back of the end zone by Dante Cunningham. And that's going to be a 40 burger for the Golden Flashes of Kent State University. As that is going to be caught. Touchdown, Flashes. And now, 19 point game once again, as time is starting to become a major factor right now. But Matt Richardson and his guys are not going to give up, at least just yet. Going to fire a beautiful ball, one on one coverage. And this guy, you know, he just throws a beautiful back shoulder fade. Where again, only his receiver can 
you know, make the catch. And matter of fact, they do also force a free now on the next possession as well. So maybe a fighting chance to get back into this game. But you forgot about the football. And oh boy, did that ball fly in the air. Oh my goodness gracious. Jarvis Williams is going to really want that one back as now. It makes things a lot harder for the Warhawks to come back and win this game as Tyron Williams will hand it off and that run game is going to do the rest. Kent State, they are going to win convincingly and they are going to get a second shot at that national championship as they will win against the 16 seeded Warhawks of UO Monroe, winning by a final score of 49 to 30. Certainly was a very exciting semi-final matchup that we got to see here in the first part of this episode we'll see who they do get the opportunity to go up against whether that be one of their own conference teams in central michigan or the number three seeded eastern carolina pirates we'll see how that other semi-final game goes down and speaking of that semi-final action let's go ahead and dive right into it as both teams are going to be seeking their first national championship appearance over the course of this series as central michigan they were not even in the playoffs i don't think back in year number one so for them to make it as far as they did in their first ever playoff appearance definitely is a really promising sign to say the least but eastern carolina they are certainly on a mission they were poised to make a deep run back in year number one but they were bounced early by Eastern Michigan. And now they're just trying to go ahead and finish off their MAC counterpart, Central Michigan, so that they can get a date with another MAC squad in the national championship game. But with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off here as the second semifinal matchup in this episode. Going to get underway as Barrett Heston, he's going to blow the cap off this game early. Touchdown! Eastern Carolina you want to talk about a picture-perfect way to go ahead and get this thing rolling that is exactly how you do it and oh boy what Central Michigan is gonna do in response we got another special teams play possibly what's gonna happen we got a man wide but naked open down the sideline he gets some blocks as well and he will not be caught either and so I didn't realize we were in a Drake song because we just went back to back on the special teams plays. Each team getting a touchdown from their kick return units. And we start this thing off seven apiece here as Barrett Haston, he will find the end zone in a different way. He'll score a touchdown on the first actual offensive possession of this game as Rick McFadden sold the, the pass well. and. Hey, Hassan was able to run right through that hole, and that's not going to be the only hole that he runs through today as Barrett Hassan. He gets three touchdowns here, and they all happen literally in the first half of this game. Just absolutely incredible stuff. And now we'll go ahead and see what Central Michigan can do as they find themselves down 21-7. They were also, we called UL Monroe a Cinderella, Central Michigan they certainly fit that bill as well but they need a spark on special teams are they gonna get it oh my goodness yes they are touchdown chippewas and just a one score game here and a chance to possibly go ahead and tie it watkins drops back here towards the end of the third quarter he's gonna toss it up for his halfback and his running back is actually going to come down with it really providing some extremely soft hands there and look at this 330 left to play and Central Michigan with a chance to take the lead are they going to pull the upset on Eastern Carolina Watkins trying to run it in but it's fumbled it is actually going to be fumbled and Eastern Carolina they are actually going to recover inside their five yard line granted but I mean you just that was a massive play they were going to take the lead if they didn't force a turnover and speaking of turnovers on the next central michigan possession they turn the football over again so the first time they turn the ball over it's not back breaking simply because you know eastern michigan was forced to punt but now that was in 
field goal range. And now 20 seconds left to play here. A chance to possibly take the lead. We'll see if this kicker's got ice in his veins. And yes, he does. That field goal attempt is going to be good. And a three-point game with Central Michigan being provided one final chance, one final drive. They're trying to force overtime, but Marcus Watkins, he throws across his body and not, not really a play that you wanted to see. Turnovers was really the difference in this game. Central Michigan, they had their opportunities to win this game. Matter of fact, I would go far to say is they should have won this game. But really in that fourth quarter, they fumbled a bag as Central Michigan. They had three turnovers in this game. All three of them were in the fourth quarter and just really a backbreaking way to end this season, even though they were not expected to make it this far into the FCS playoffs. But sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Congratulations to Eastern Carolina, though, as they find a way to survive and they move on to the FCS National Championship. And now it all comes down to this. FCS National Championship game between two teams that are 14 and 1 and both teams that are riding hot streaks right now. Kent State, they got that 11 game winning streak whereas Eastern Carolina, they're currently riding that 9 game winning streak as of right now. So, a very exciting time to be live as we look live down at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. We will play host to this year's FCS National Championship game and we'll see what happens. Does Eastern Carolina have what it takes to be a national champion or will Kent State represent the dawn of a new dynasty? Only one way to find out. It's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of games played over the course of this season. Now it's time to settle it on the field. As we jump in late in the first quarter as Tyler Williams, he's going to hand it off to the tailback. And the tailback is going to run it in the end zone. Touchdown. Golden flashes. As Kent State will go ahead right here. And they will take a nice little 7-0 lead. But we knew this Eastern Carolina team, they can play too. As Reagan McFadden, he's going to fire a shot down the sideline and he is going to make an incredible throw his first passing touchdown in the past two games as Ricky McFadden just nods it back up we got an exciting national championship game on our hands who wants it more as we now jump into the second quarter of action still all knotted up at seven apiece as hang on now it's a reverse we got a little no it's fumbled and Eastern Carolina is going to recover as that receiver, he was trying to pitch it out, but he's not used to making those kind of decisions. Uh, and it didn't work out that way. It did not work out in a positive way. And Eastern Carolina, they get a field goal there. They have the 10-7 lead. And they have a chance to add on to this as well here. Just got to finish this set first half strong. And that's not what I'm talking about. Ricky McFadden, he puts the ball on the turf. And this Kent State defense, one of the best defense in all of college football down here at the FCS level. They do manage to go ahead and recover it. And so, while Eastern Carolina, they dodged the ball the first time. As we see them trying to take the lead instead. Kent State is going to pull ahead here as Brandon Moore is going to take this one straight to the crib. And going into halftime, the Golden Flashes will take a four-point lead here in the FCS National Championship game. And in that second half, they start to take control. Midway through the third quarter, one of the best red zone offenses in the country coming in. Top five in the nation in terms of coming away with points in the red zone. And they come away and do just that, 21-10. If Eastern Carolina can't get it together in the second half, it could be barbecue chicken. And it's starting to become more clear who wants that national championship more as the defense has been absolutely rock solid here. As now Kent State with a chance to finish things off. Williams down the right hand side and it's going to be caught. Touchdown. Golden flashes. 
Oh my goodness. 28 to 10 will end up being your final score in this one as Kent State will repeat as national champions of the MCS here in year number two in an incredible season for the Golden Flashes as they will finish 15 and 1 as their overall record in over the course of this season and people are going to hate me saying this as a non-Alabama sports fan but this coach for Kent State he might be the Nick Saban of the FCS level an incredible season for them so it's been a really exciting year number two here on the MCS Dynasty we now know that we have a national champion now and Kent State for the second year in a row they garner that national title they are champions here in this FCS universe but next episode we already start on the warpath with year number three and that is going to be the episode where we are going to have the full offseason recap. We're going to check out the award winners. And we're also going to check out the All-Americans. Plus, what we're also going to do, go for the entire uh, offseason. Go through recruiting, all of that good stuff. As well as a few teams that are going to receive some NCAA sanctions. And that will also, of course, be the episode where you submit your custom players here. Uh for season number three so you're gonna want to tune into next episode especially if you want to have your very own custom guy in this series so i hope you enjoyed today's episode it's been an exciting year number two we're already two seasons in and this has been my favorite series to do by far and i hope you guys are enjoying it if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button for me because it does help me out with the youtube algorithm also hit that subscribe button if you have to be brand new and of course hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of any video that i drop on my youtube channel but in the meantime i will see you guys a couple days from now for the full off season recap of year number two so i hope you guys are ready for that but in the meantime i hope you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody